So what aspect of the brain are useful in this whole endeavor? Which, by the way, I should say, you're you're both a neuroscientist and an AI person. I guess the dream is to both understand the brain and to build AGI systems. So you're, it's like an engineer's perspective of trying to understand the brain. So what aspects of the brain, uh, functionally speaking, like you said, do you find interesting? Yeah, quite a lot of things, all right? So one is, um, you know, if you look at the visual cortex, um, uh, and and you know, the, the uh, visual cortex is is a large part of the brain. Uh, I forget the ex- exact fraction, but it is it's a it's a huge part of our brain area is uh, occupied by just just vision. Um, so vision visual cortex is not just a feed forward cascade of neurons. Um, uh, there are a lot more feedback connections in the brain compared to the feed forward connections, and and it is surprising to the level of detail neuroscientists have actually studied this. If you, if you go into neuroscience literature and poke around and ask, you know, have they studied what will be the effect of poking a neuron in uh, level IT uh, in level V1? And uh, um, have they studied that? Uh, and you will say, Yes, they have studied that. <laughs> <laughs> so every po- every possible combination. Yeah. I mean, study. it's it's a it's not a random exploration at all. It's a very hypothesis driven, right? Like yeah. they they are very uh, experimental neuroscientists are very very systematic in how they probe the brain uh, yeah. because experiments are very costly to conduct. They take a lot of preparation. They they need a lot of control. So they they are very hypothesis driven in yeah. how they probe the brain. And um, often what I find is that when we have a question in um, in AI uh, about have has anybody probed uh, probed how lateral connections in the brain works? And when you go and read the literature, yes, people have probed it and people have probed it very systematically. And, and they have hypotheses about how those lateral connections are supposedly contributing mm-hmm. to visual processing. Uh, but of course, they haven't built very, very functional detailed models of it. By the way, how do the you know, studies, sorry to interrupt, uh, do they... Do they stimulate like a neuron in one particular area of the visual cortex and then see how the travel or the signal travels kind of thing? Fascinating, very, very fascinating experiments. Right? You know, so I can I can give you one example I was impressed with. Um, this is uh, so before going to that, let me like let, let me give you uh, uh, you know a uh, overview of how the the layers in the cortex are organized. Sure. Right, uh, visual cortex is organized into roughly four hierarchical levels. Okay, so uh, V one, V two, V four, IT, and in V1, what happened to V3? Uh, well, yeah, there's another pathway. Uh, okay, right. okay, so there is this is this. I'm I'm talking about just the object recognition pathway. All right, cool. Okay. Uh, All right. And then um, in V1 itself, um, it, so it's there is a very detailed microcircuit in V1 itself. There is there is organization within a level itself. Um, the cortical sheet is organized into uh, you know multiple layers, and there are columnar structure. And and this this layer wise and columnar structure is repeated in V one, V two, V four, uh, uh, IT, all of them, right? Uh, and and the connections between these layers within a level, with, you know, in V one itself there are six layers roughly, and the connections between them there is a particular structure to them. Uh, and um, now, so one example of uh, an experiment uh, uh, people did is. When I when you present a stimulus, uh, which is um, let's say requires um, separating the foreground from the background of an object, so mm-hmm. it is a, it's a textured triangle on a textured background, uh, and um, you can check does the surface settle first or does the contour settle first? Settle. Settle in the sense that the so w- when you find. Finally, form the percept of the of the uh, triangle. Mm-hmm. You understand where the contours of the triangle are, and you also know where the inside of the triangle is. Right. That's when you form the final percept. Uh, now, you can ask, what is the dynamics of forming that final percept? Mm-hmm. Um, do the uh, do the neurons um, first find the edges and converge on where the edges are, mm-hmm. and then they find the inner surfaces, or does it go the other way? The other way around. Uh, so, so what's the answer? Uh, in this case, it it turns out that it find, first settles on the edges. It it converges on the edge hypothesis first, and then the 
the surfaces are filled in from the edges to the inside that's fascinating uh, and and the detail to which you can study this it's it's amazing that you can actually not only find um the temporal dynamics of when this happens uh, uh and then you can also find which layer in the you know in v1 which layer is encoding uh the edges which layer is encoding the surfaces and um which layer is encoding the feedback which layer is encoding the feed forward and what what's the combination of them that produces the final person mm -hmm. um and these kinds of experiments stand out when you try to explain illusions um uh, one one example of a favorite illusion of mine is the kanitsa triangle i don't know whether you are familiar with this one so this is um uh this is an example where it's a triangle uh but you know the the corners of the only the corners of the triangle are shown in the stimuli the stimulus mm -hmm. uh so they they look like kind of pacman uh um, oh, oh the black pacman yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and you start to see your visual system hallucinates the edges yeah um and you can you you know you when you look at it you will see a faint edge right yeah. and you can go inside the brain and look you know do actually neurons signal the presence of this edge and and if they signal how do they do it because they are not receiving anything from the input Mm -hmm. in the the input is blank for those neurons right yeah. uh so how do they signal it when does the signaling happen you know does it, you know so so if a real contour is present in the input then the you know, the neurons immediately signal oh, okay there is a there is an edge here when when it is an illusory edge um it is clearly not in the input mm -hmm. it is coming from the context mm -hmm. so those neurons fire later and and you can say that okay these are it's the feedback connections that is causing them to fire uh and and they happen later and you can f uh, find the dynamics of them oh, so so these studies are pretty yeah. impressive and and very detailed so by the way just uh just stay, step back you said yeah. uh that there may be more feedback connections than feed forward connections yeah uh, first of all if it's just, just for like a machine learning folks Yeah. I mean that for, that's crazy that there's all these feedback connections. I mean we often think about uh, thank thanks to deep learning you you start to think about um the the human brain as a kind of feed forward mechanism. Right. Uh so what the heck are these feedback connections? Yeah. yeah. What what's their what's the dynamics? Well, what are we supposed to think about them? Yeah. So this is this fits into a very beautiful picture about how the brain works right um so the the beautiful picture of how the brain works is that our brain is building a model of the world uh i know so our visual system is building a model of how objects behave in the world and and we are constantly projecting that model back onto the world so what we are seeing is not just a feed forward thing that just gets interpreted in, in a feed forward mm -hmm. part it, we are constantly projecting our expectations onto the world and and what the final percept is a combination of what we project onto the world uh combined with what the actual sensory input is mm -hmm. uh, almost like trying to calculate the difference and then trying to interpret the difference yeah it's it's um i wouldn't put it as calculating the difference it's more like what is the best explanation for the the input stimulus based on the model of the world i have got it Got it. and that's where all the illusions come in and that's but that's that's an incredibly efficient so uh efficient process so the feedback mechanism it just helps you constantly uh yeah so hallucinate how the world should be based on your world model exactly. and then just looking at uh if there's novelty uh like trying to explain it like yeah. that, hence that's why movement we detect movement really well there's all these kinds of things and that, this is like at all different levels of the cortex you're saying that Every, this happens at the lowest level at exactly. the highest level yes yeah Fe in fact feedback connections are more prevalent in everywhere in the cortex and and um so one way to think about it and there's a lot of evidence for this is inference um so you know so basically if you have a model of the world and when when some evidence comes in what you are doing is inference right mm -hmm. you are trying to now explain this evidence using your model of the world yep and this inference includes projecting your model onto the evidence and uh, taking the evidence uh back into the model and and doing an iterative procedure 
Um, and uh, this iterative procedure is what happens using the feed-forward feedback propagation. Uh, and feedback affects what you see in the world, and you know it also affects feed-forward propagation. And examples are everywhere. We we see these kinds of things everywhere. The idea that there can be multiple competing hypotheses uh, in our model trying to explain the same evidence, and then you have to kind of make them compete. And one hypothesis will explain away the other hypothesis. 